You've probably all heard the curse, may you live in interesting times. Well, we're certainly doing that at the moment, aren't we? We're constantly bombarded with bad news, but let's just forget about it for a few minutes, shall we? With so much going on, it's all too easy to worry about what might happen and forget to live our lives to the full. I live not far from the Solent and have been lucky enough to go on other people's boats from time to time over the years. I've always dreamed of having my own boat and a couple of weeks ago I did the Powerboat Level 2 course. It was on a rib and we spent two days on the River Hamble and Southampton Water learning things like how to handle the boat, avoid collisions at sea and do man overboard drills. The weather was perfect and it was wonderful to be out on the water learning new skills. Watching the tide rise and fall reminded me of the story of King Canute, who famously demonstrated to his courtiers that no man can control the forces of nature. What's this got to do with hips, you might well ask? Well, keep watching and I'll tell you. Osteoarthritis is one of the commonest causes of pain and disability. It's getting worse as our populations grow older and we live longer. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could prevent arthritis? No pain, no stiffness, no potentially harmful drugs or major surgery. We're not anywhere near finding a cure for osteoarthritis, but that doesn't mean it won't happen one day. Let's have a look at some of the things that you can do to help, particularly if you are at a higher risk of developing arthritis. Let's start with the basic science. Osteoarthritis is a disease of the cartilage that covers the ends of the bones within our joints. It's a protein layer that allows the joint to move smoothly. It absorbs stresses and strains and mechanical loading. It's a bearing. If you've ever jointed a chicken, you can see what it looks like and how the joints work. Cartilage is supported by the underlying bone and lubricated by synovial fluid. This is a thick, oily liquid that is produced by the cells that are contained in a membrane that lines the joint. When arthritis happens, the cartilage becomes thin and starts to wear away. The tissues can become inflamed and this causes pain and of course stiffness. But what are the risk factors for developing arthritis? I find it helpful to think about the things that you can control and those that you can't. If you're overweight, this overloads your joints and if you already have arthritis, it can make it progress much more quickly. Being overweight is associated with chronic inflammation and this can damage the joints and start the process of developing arthritis. If you play high impact sports for many years or you do heavy manual work, this can cause repetitive joint injuries. Over time, these injuries damage the cartilage and bone and this can trigger the development of arthritis in your 40s and 50s. What about the things that you can't control? The risks increase as we get older. That's just a fact of life, and there's not much more we can do about that. Arthritis definitely runs in families. You can probably blame your parents if you develop arthritis in middle age. Some congenital and developmental abnormalities like hip dysplasia, bowed legs and scoliosis cause abnormal loading of the joints. If you're a woman, you're much more likely to get arthritis, and the menopause is definitely associated with progression of arthritis. But what does all this mean to you if you have symptoms of arthritis or have some of the risk factors like a strong family history? Getting a diagnosis is clearly important because that will help you to understand what's going on and will give you an idea of what to expect. Losing weight is something that's easy to think about, but of course it's difficult to do. There are plenty of support groups out there and seeking the advice of a dietitian or a nutritionist can be very helpful. If you know that you have an underlying risk factor, then it's even more important to have a healthy lifestyle with a well-balanced diet and regular low-impact exercise. There are some really interesting areas of research looking at the effects of what we eat on how arthritis progresses. An anti-inflammatory, low-carbohydrate diet might be helpful for some people. If you're going through the menopause, then it might be worth considering going on HRT. There's a lot of research going on into this to see if it relieves symptoms and perhaps slows down the rate of progression of arthritis. There is evidence that supplements like chondroitin and glucosamine can slow down the progression of arthritis in some people. They are part of a group of drugs called symptomatic, slow-acting drugs for osteoarthritis that includes things like diacerine 
and avocado soybean unsaponifiables. It's a bit of a mouthful. The jury is out on these agents, but some studies show that they can delay the need for joint replacement. So can we control what happens to arth arthritic joints? Or like King Canute's courtiers, are we deluding ourselves? Well, just like when I did my course, if you understand what's going on, you can take steps to avoid trouble. By the time people come and see me about their symptoms, there's usually nothing for it but to have a hip replacement. Quite a few of them, though, are at the beginning of their journey living with arthritis and wondering what to do for the best. There are things that can be done to try and delay the inevitable. If you'd like some help to guide you along the way, then please get in touch. Thanks for watching.